All right. Hello, HCF. Uh, welcome to our meeting this morning. Awesome to have you with us in our home. And happy Mother's Day to all the moms. And happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you, guys. Ah, brilliant. I'm going to hand over to Lols as uh, she's got something for the moms. Happy, happy Mother's Day to all the moms. I really just would love to encourage you, ladies. I know lockdown for myself has been quite challenging. Um, at, at times, I know it's a great time with the family, but there has been some challenges along the way. And yeah, we'd really love to just encourage you now. May the Lord bless you over this time. I pray that um, the Lord would have huge favor over you. And I really just, I felt the Lord saying he loves you and he's, and he's proud of you. Amen. You are loved. I really feel God wanting to just put His favor on you today, that you would feel His presence on you, that you would feel His peace and assurance over you, His approval, His love, and His joy over you. And in Proverbs 31, I know it can be quite overwhelming when you read that and you think, oh, I don't know if I fit all that um, and do all that. But I feel like God would love to say to you today, you are worth far more than rubies. All of you are worth far more than rubies. You are clothed with strength and dignity, strength and dignity that comes from Him. You are loved, respected, honored, and treasured. You are treasured, mothers. We appreciate you. We love you. We honor you. Loads and loads of love. Here's a clip for you to enjoy. Mom. Because um, she cuddles me, and second thing is um, she she always plays with me, and third thing is she always loves me. Bah! I love my mommy because she's helpful, and she gives me cuddles, and she makes supper for me, and she cuddles in my bed with me and prays and sings, and. She cuddles me a lot and gives me hugs and kisses. Bye. I am proudly a mommy's boy. I love my mom because of who she is, because of what she's done for us, because she thinks about everyone else before herself, because of what a kind person she is, and because of how selfless she is. That is what is very special to me about my mom. We love, we love our mom because she's kind and helpful. Because she helps us with our homework and she and she loves us lots. She loves you lots, eh? Yeah. Cool. Because she's she loves us. She's beautiful. She takes us places that we want to go, and she buys us things that we want to get. Because she makes food for me, and. She gives me kisses. She gives you kisses. That's beautiful. Thank you, my darling. Hello, Mom. I just wanted to send a message to say that I love you. I think I'm thinking about you. I'm missing you so much today. Um, thank you for being such a special person to me. Thank you for loving the Lord and showing us Jesus' love through you. Um, thank you for being dependable and trustworthy and loyal. Um, I love you so much. You are so special. Um, to me and to so many people um, just know that you are loved today and I wish that we could be spending the day together um, you are a true blessing to me love you mom I love my mom because she's brought me up to be a well-behaved child I love my mom because she's brought me up in the Christian way of life I love my mom because she cooks supper every single night for us okay. I love my mom because she helps me whenever I'm stuck with schoolwork. I love my mom because she helps me pack my bags. Love you, mom. Love you, mom. Granny, why do you love your mom? Because uh, cause, cause I get to cuddle with her in my bed. Why do I love my mom? Well, let's see. She's been an incredible influence in my life. And uh, she was the first one 
who came to faith in Jesus in our family and um, she absolutely felt passionately in love with the Lord and uh, really impacted our whole family um, right through through our family and with her passion and her zeal and her love for the Lord so uh, I love mom because she not only gave me physical birth but she was very instrumental in bringing me second birth uh, and so well, mom we love you so much and thank you for being such an incredible person um, we love you dearly God bless I love my mom because she is incredibly devoted to the things of God, incredibly passionate and so in love with her family. Um, she loves us so, so deeply um, and she's also an incredible Scrabble competitor. <laughs> when I think of the word mother, I think of the phrase in fierce love and I've been incredibly blessed to have been born to an amazing woman and through my marriage have gained another amazing woman and I have learned especially over these past few weeks as things have been so strange that both of them no matter how mild mannered they may seem when you meet them uh, would fiercely storm the gates of any roadblock if they got wind of the fact that I needed them even for a moment and for that I am most incredibly blessed and grateful thank you mom thank you mum you are so very loved Right, just before we head into worship, let's just open in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for your presence with us today and uh, just blessing on every family and just your favor, God, and meet with us and have your way in us. Flood us with your spirit. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. Sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. Sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift him high With the creation cry God we praise you Whoa. Praise you, oh, 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 we praise you. Let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift him high With all creation cry God we praise you Whoa, we praise you This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like we praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. 
We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lifted high Oh, we praise you in Jesus name hope is built my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy trust in Jesus' name. In Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong. In the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord. Lord of all when Darkness seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil My anchor holds within the veil Christ alone, cornerstone Weak made strong, the Savior's love he is Lord, Lord of all. He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ of love, cornerstone. Strong in the Savior's love through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior. Trumpet sound. Oh, may I there 
in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone and faultless stand before the throne he shall come he shall come with trumpet sound Oh, may I then in Him be found Dressed in His righteousness alone Faultless stand before His throne in Christ alone Cornerstone Weak made strong In the Savior's love Through the storm He is Lord Lord of all Christ alone Cornerstone Weak made strong Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone, weak made strong. you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore and worthy is your name Jesus, you deserve the praise, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, 
Jesus, you deserve the praise, worthy is your name. And now my shame is gone, I stand amazed in your love undeniable. Your grace goes on and on, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. And worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Your name be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names will be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names will be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. The name above all names be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all your name Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name worthy is your name Deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise 
You're the name above all names, yeah. All right, we're going to have Breaking of Bread now. Um, and we've been breaking bread every every week. We see it in Scripture. We see when the church is met in homes that they, they broke bread constantly. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, that as often as we eat the bread, we proclaim the Lord's death until his return. We are looking forward to eating this with him again uh, when he comes to fetch us, takes us home. And so, friends, let's uh, enjoy the moment with your family, our friends, or even on your own, just with the Lord. Fantastic. See you in a bit. I stood condemned by justice, true. Jesus, your shoulders weighted down. Your brow was pierced by thorny crown that wouldn't load you off for me. The cross it was to set me free. Right, we're going to head uh, to some announcements, and uh, you might have noticed in the newsletter that um, HCF Relief uh, is in action, and thank you to all those who volunteered and are helping, are sending money, sending food, um, whether it's for Hope Trust, those for the poor, or for those families in need in the community, or even in our, in our church family. And so there's many ways to get involved through, with the gardens, with uh, food boxes, with financial relief. Um, whichever way the Lord leads you. Um, if you'd like to know more, please do contact us at the office. So let's uh, head across to those announcements. Following that, we're going to head across to Elliot, who's going to be preaching from Acts chapter 2. And we trust the Holy Spirit is really just going to move and touch you where you are this morning. Thank you so much for being with us. See you later. an update on the uh, COVID outbreak. We are now in stage four, so we're now easing our lockdown. I just want to give some more information just to, to let everyone know that, that we are definitely still seeing a lot of the benefit from us flattening the curve, and we hope to continue that. Um, areas that, that often you don't get to see is, is knowing things that obviously now the, the medical community is having time to adjust to this new disease. This is something that's only come out since December, and we're now discovering some new medications that might assist us. We're finding other medications that aren't going to help and are possibly doing harm. We're very new things, particularly about ventilation, and we've seen a lot of times where possibly the ventilators are, are, are things that could be doing a bit of harm. So the time that's bought us is is, is, is valuable, and you'll see that there will be a, a different impact. So even if the numbers do increase, as again, we expect them to do as the lockdown eases, you are definitely receiving better care um, by us having had time to, to start to prepare. Um, so we will ask that you guys continue to do that, and. We're going to continue trying to do the, the best we can um, as we, we manage this outbreak together. God bless. Good morning, friends. What a privilege for me to be sharing the word of God today. It's been a long time. 
I'm missing everyone and uh, the new series birth in flames we want to look into the scripture and find out something that is going to encourage us and take us back to the bible and help us to live our christian life with the fire of god in us so let's go and see what um, we can learn this morning the book of acts is a beautiful picture a picture that god wants us to learn and to see Friends, we can't go to something that we can't see. We can't do something that we can't see. So when we see this picture in the book of Acts, that's when we want to be in that picture, to be part of that picture. So about the flame of God, about the fire of God, this is what we want to learn this morning, that the church was birthed in flames. The book of Acts also it shows us that how the church began, how they started uh, in the... Um, chapter 2 verse 2 that's where we're going to read um, taking few verses from chapter 2 uh, pick up those few verses that I felt they are for us and for this morning uh, for us as a church chapter 2 verse 2 talks about suddenly remember that they were told to go and wait go and wait in Jerusalem and wait for the power, the Holy Spirit. Friends, I don't think they knew what was going to happen. I don't think they could perceive what was going to happen. They were just waiting for the Holy Spirit, waiting for the power. They didn't know how is that power going to come upon them. But the Bible says, suddenly. It's something that they didn't know what was going to happen, but they're waiting and waiting. And suddenly, God is... So many suddenlies, things that because he's God, the Holy Spirit is God. And God has suddenly things that we, we can't even perceive, and, but we just know that God is going to be using and doing it. Suddenly, there was fire upon them as they were waiting. They had no idea, yes, but suddenly something happened to them, which they realized this is God in them, the fire of God. Oh, how we should trust God even if we don't fully understand, we don't know what's going to happen. Even in our meetings, even in our gatherings, even in our homes, how we should be trusting God for his suddenness. It's a beautiful thing when you just continue with your daily duties and daily chores. Suddenly, God just speaks his word. He just comes with power upon you. And then he tells you to pray, he tells you to read suddenly, and then you feel this warmth of God's power on you. Suddenly, we need those suddenlies because we are the people born from the fire. In chapter 2, verse 4, the Bible talks about that they were all, all filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, we desire that all. I know when people are filled filled with God's power what happens to them we desire that to happen upon us that changes you that gives you power that gives you ability that gives you you become a, a different person altogether because you're full of the spirit people who are full of the spirit um, they don't need to go around and telling others that hey I'm full of the Holy Spirit but friends, I believe so much that when one is full of the Holy Spirit, there will be signs and symptoms or there will be the evidence that that person is full of power, full of the flames of God. And you can't help it, but because it's something that is within you, it comes out in your daily living, in your home, at work, even in this situation that we are faced with. We're going to see more people who are full full of the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit of God wants to fill us because he knows that once he's in us, then we are able to fulfill our call as we call to the nations, call to, to reach out, call to touch different types of people. We can only do that when we are full of the Holy Spirit. Friends, I believe that that husband, that wife, those children, that boss, and all those people that you might think that uh, actually they've got a problem. The biggest thing 
is that we should be praying that they'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because I know once a husband is full of the Holy Spirit, there'll be a difference. A wife, there'll be a difference. Children, there'll be parents, there'll be difference in them because of God's power in them. They tend to listen more to the Spirit within them because they are full. And once the Spirit is full in us, then He controls us. He takes us. He causes us to speak His own way, not our way. We tend to listen more when we're full of the Holy Spirit. And in chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible says, Peter stood up with the eleven. For me, that's an unorganized unity of leadership. Unorganized unity of leadership. There was no one, as Dudley says, there was no one who says, hey, come, come on now, we're going to have uh, Peter preaching the word, and then all you eleven guys, please stand with him. There was no one. We don't hear that from the Bible, that there was someone who was telling them that, guys, when Peter stands up, you stand with him. Unorganized unity. I, I believe that they felt the spirit in them, and they couldn't do any other thing, as they saw their brother standing up, they said, we want to stand with him. We want to be there with him. I mean, when you stand knowing that you've got your brothers around you, you stand with power because they are full of the Holy Spirit, you're full of the Holy Spirit, and then you are able um, to stand and deliver what God has laid in your heart. We need more people that uh, they, they, they're going to be full of the Spirit and then they know how to work in unity with other people. Um, let's ask the Holy Spirit to unite us and cause us to stand together. No, not organize things, but Him organizing us um, through His power, telling us and showing us what's important, what we can do. Wow! When He stood there with the 11th, what a preach! You, you, you can analyze that preach and that, that speech that was totally with power of God. He stood there with God's boldness in him because of the Holy Spirit in him. And he shared the word of God. I, no one taught him how to preach and how to do this thing, but God's spirit in him as he stood with the 11. And, and then he brought the word of God, brought the word of God. For me, I wish most people will learn from that. That when we are under the fire of God, filled with the Spirit, then we're able to say things that perhaps um, we, we, we won't have any way to say them, but because of God's power in us, then those things, they come up. Chapter 2, verse 37, the Bible says, Peter's words convicted them. He wasn't just saying lovely words and just blessing them, but he was showing them. He, he, it was more like he was having a history, explaining the history, explaining what the Bible says and what God has said. And he's explaining in such a way that those words, they, the Bible also said they pierced their hearts. If the word of God has never pierced your heart, You've never been convicted. I, I know that people, sometimes they just see a big, uh, lovely group with uh, songs, with uh, uh, joy in their hearts, and they celebrating Jesus. And most of the people, they just join them. But the word of God has never pierced into their hearts. Friends, this morning, the Holy Spirit uh, uh, wants to work in your heart through the word of God and pierce I just love the Zulu says, Shlaba! Shlaba in Kizio! And you pierce their heart. This is what we desire, that um, when the word of God comes in that way, something happens. There's a song that uh, I remembered as I was uh, um, preparing. It says, The words that pierced my heart showed me that I was lost. I confess my sins. 
that I needed a savior, I needed a redeemer, I needed to be cleansed. Because that word, when it came, it came with the light of God and it pierced my heart. And then you saw, you, you, you're able to see your sins and where you are and how much you need the Savior. This is what happens when fire of God comes upon a person and is able to speak the word of God with boldness. We were born through flames, in flames. Chapter 2, verse 42, the Bible says they devoted themselves, devotees, to the things of God. I was trying to look up into the meaning of the devotees. I came out with so many meanings, and but I just want these simple things about devotees, about people that were uh, devoted to something. Those are people who are committed, and uh, people who are sold out, people who live and eat and dream what they believe and they do whatever they do unashamed because of what they believe in friends when that fire comes upon us when that flame burns within us it causes us to be those devotees people who are sold out people who, who don't care what happens around them but who said i am I'm sold out to God. I'm a slave. I want to live this life no matter what. We, we, were, we are people of power. People of fire. People of promise. People stand there no matter what. And be sold out to the things of God. That's who we are. And once the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And we're being uh, baptized and filled with the spirit it changes us in such a way that we find that the only thing that we can do is to to be devoted to god devoted people they don't mind spending money spending time spending energy to what they believe in i had a i've, I've used this illustration before about um, the fans of soccer these people that follow soccer so much and uh, they, they just love soccer in such a way that the whole year they're planning it. Friends, if you're devoted to the things of God, you plan, you plan your life according to the things of God. And these people, they don't mind spending money hiring buses and kumbis and go to the stadium because they're devoted. They don't mind taking days from their work. Because they're so devoted to what they do. And even for us, when it comes to the things of God, we must take days for the things of God. These people, they don't mind wearing those uh, uh, jerseys and clothes and whatever that represent their team. They, they, they wear them unashamed because they're so devoted. I mean, they sing the whole night. They come to the stadium, they're still singing. They're devoted. They don't mind spending that time with other people, not by themselves, with other people. They're so devoted. Even for us as Christians, when the power, the flame of God comes upon us, we find ourselves that we can't do any other thing rather than just wearing the clothes of righteousness and clothes of the love of God, unashamed and wear those things and go and join the other Christians and stand with them because we're devoted to the things of God. For us, we have to be so sold out to the things of God in such a way that those that see us, they're able to say, I want that, I want that. We can also be devoted into other things like apostolic teaching we we have books we have um, things that have been written down things that have been recorded that we believe they are apostolic teachings friends gather those things and soak yourself into those teachings teachings that talk about the church the leadership how to live a christian life how to hold how to uh, live your life in your family things that are building us up because of the fire of god in us things that are helping us to be sent out to go and preach the gospel those are apostolic teachings let's hold on to them let's devour them and they are available they are there 
because of the God's fire in us. And then we devote ourselves to the apostolic teachings. The Bible also talks about that they devoted themselves to the fellowship. I know it's difficult now when we talk about the fellowship. The fellowship is not that much because of what we are faced with. But friends, don't lose touch with other people. Don't isolate yourself. Try by all means to keep in touch and connect with others. Uh, let's use whatever that we, we can to connect with other people. People of fire, they're looking for others so that they can burn and have more flames with others. Fellowship. And they devoted themselves in breaking of bread, the Lord's table, Holy Communion. Devoted. Uh, I, I just love God what he has revealed to us as a fellowship. We are devoted that every Sunday now we're going to break bread together. We might be separated, but we're devoted to break bread. Fire in us causes us to be devotees and break bread with other Christians. The Bible also talks about that they were devoted into prayer. Oh, oh that precious time of coming before the master, coming before the king. And they're not just to come and ask him for things, what we need, which is good, but come and have fellowship with Jesus, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, fellowship with God himself, the time of prayer, the time that no one should be pushing us into it, but it should be the longing of our hearts that we want to pray, we want to pray. I've realized also at this time we find ourselves just praying and praying, uh, not counting how many times. Because of the situation, we're being forced into that, actually. But friends, we should desire to communicate and have this communion and talking to our Lord Jesus Christ. The prayer, I know it changes things. Prayer. It's our backbone. Prayer. Some of us were born through prayer. I know there are some people who are praying for me to be born again. Even in our country, we need more people to be praying because I know there's power in the prayer. Don't neglect that prayer. Devote yourself into prayer. Be sold out into prayer. And do your best that even if no one knows about you pray, but you're going to keep on praying. I've quoted this before. This American rapper, MC Hammer, when he says, uh, that's why we pray, just to make it today. I say we pray. Friends, we have to pray. We don't have to look for something that we pray for. But just to say thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. Lord, you are the best thing that has ever happened to my life. Just coming before me and worshiping in prayer and, and bring everything that you have in prayer, devoted to prayer. Friends, my heart this morning is that we wait for the promise. We wait for the flame of God. We wait for the power. I mean, even at this time, I do believe that what's going to help us is the power of God in us. Because the power, when it comes upon us, when the power is in us, causes us to stand, to stand. When everyone is going that way or this way, but we are able to stand because of the power. It's not our own doing. It's not our own power, but it's God's power. I pray even for those that are weak. I pray that they will have the Holy Spirit, the flame of God burning in them and able to stand. Even for those that want to quit, there's no way. People are born in the flame of God. They don't quit. They stand. Stand, stand, stand. Remember Daniel? How he stood in the difficult times. He stood there and worshipped his God. 
We are the children of God. We live in the fire. We speak about God's fire. We want to touch other people with God's fire. Our words are nothing without God's fire. Our words are meaningless when we don't have God's spirit and God's power in those words. May the Lord help us to be those that desire and go and wait and speak under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I always think this way, what would it be if all of us were full of God's power, full of the flame because we are the people of the flame? What did it be? Imagine the whole of Howick, the whole of Hilton, the whole of Peter Marisbeck, Maryvale, everywhere where there's God's fire in the hearts of the people. Even in that family, God can come suddenly and bring his fire. His fire is there for you. Shall we pray this moment, please? Father, we come before you. Father, we love you. Father, we desire your fire. We are born in flames, true flames. And in us, there is your fire. And Father, we know nothing that can quench that fire. And I pray, Father, that you touch that family and that family, let your fire burn in the houses all around us, oh God. God's fire. In the heart of that one who's cold, let your fire burn and bring back that fire, oh God, where all of us, young and old, will be full of your fire, your spirit, oh God. Father, thank you for your grace and your love that you love us so much. You still want to bless us because you said the promises for us and for our children, your fire. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your people now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.